Hello, today's video is a step into the world of Philips Hue. Now you've probably seen a lot of my videos about lots of Philips Hue products, but I've never actually done a video about how you can set up your home to use Philips Hue lights. And this is what this video is all about. So what I'll do is take you on a journey where you can have Philips Hue smart lighting in your home. And it's not as hard as you think. I'll go through what you need, what you don't need, how it all works, and then Perhaps in a follow-up video, if you're interested, I could go a little bit in depth, but this really is a beginner's guide, so it should be pretty easy for anyone to understand. So what do we need to start our Philips Hue journey? Well, I've got a starter kit here, which is a start, and uh, I'm gonna go through it and explain everything that's in this kit and uh, why we need it and why it's useful. Now, you don't necessarily need a starter kit like this. You can buy all the elements individually, and I'll make sure those are listed in the description of this video. And while you're foraging around in the description of this video, I've split it into different chapters so you can skip to bits that are interesting to you or not. And it also means it's easier for you to come back to it anytime and choose the bit that's interesting to you rather than listen to all this waffle. And you know, while you're there, maybe hit the subscribe button. If you subscribe to this channel, it's absolutely free and it will help my channel grow. And if the video is in any way helpful to you, hit the thumbs up, that would be great. Anyway, let's have a look inside this box and talk about what we need. So as I say, this is a Philips Hue starter kit. It is the B22 starter kit. What does B22 mean? Well, it's actually the name of the connector at the bottom of the bulbs. You probably just know it as a BC or bayonet cap connector. And uh, yeah, its technical name is B22. So because we've got B22 light fittings in the flat, this kit is perfect for it. If you've got Edison screw bulbs or small Edison screw bulbs, Hue actually supply lights for those as well. So uh, let's get into this box and see what we've got. Now look at that, that is everything we need to get started with it. Um, as you can see, we've got three bulbs in here. So these can be warm white, cool white, and also millions of colors as well. You can buy lights that are just the warm white or the cool white and no colors. They are cheaper, but I want to be able to have every light in the house to be a different color, just to set the mood and to make things a little bit more interesting. So uh, probably the most important thing you need is this. This is the Philips Hue Hub. Now a lot of newer Philips Hue bulbs work on Bluetooth, so you can use Bluetooth to control the... This video is going to be about using a Philips Hue Hub because it gives you more control over the lights, which I'll show you later on in the video. So this rather small, unassuming device is a bit like a kind of Wi-Fi router for these lights. It uses a protocol called Zigbee. It doesn't use Wi-Fi, it uses something called Zigbee. And that is a sort of network that the light bulbs use to communicate with each other and this. Now you don't necessarily need to use all Philips Hue branded lights or switches or anything like that. Anything that is Zigbee compatible will work with this, but to keep things simple and not cause confusion, we'll just be talking about Philips Hue product in this video. So uh, yeah, this is the brains of the operation and it has got two connectors on it. One of them is for power and one of them is to plug into your router. So if you're with Sky or Virgin or anyone like that and you've got your router, you just plug it straight into that. So uh, it has status LEDs here. It also has this Philips logo, which is a button and you use that for pairing, but that will come up in a little bit. So uh, what else do we need? Well, you really need something to control your lights. You can control the lights via the Philips Hue app and also connect it to your voice assistant of choice. But this is a light switch. Now it's quite different to your regular light switch in both size and operation, and it doesn't require any mains power. You don't need to be an electrician to install Philips Hue in your home. It really is that simple. Now, I have done a video about converting your existing light switches to take these Philips Hue switches, and I'll put a link to it up in the corner and also in the description so I don't cover old ground. But yeah, basically, this goes on the wall and uh, can be used to control the light. You don't even necessarily need to have it in the room that the lights are in. It can be anywhere in the house. 
So if you want a button that will turn off all the lights, you can program it onto here. It is mental how clever it is. Now, basically, it's also magnetic. So the controller part comes away and just snaps back in. So you can use this as a remote control. So if you've got a switch in your bedroom, you can take this to bed with you, not like that, and just turn off all the bedroom lights and then just pop it back on when you want to. You can hold it onto the wall using the mounting that I've suggested in the other video, or it has adhesive strips there and there, or you can screw it onto the wall. There's screw holes there, and these are the magnets on the back. And this uses a cell size battery and they last for flipping ages. Like we're talking about a year or two years and that's even with a lot of use. And that is our light switch. Now, you can turn the Philips Hue lights on and off with a normal light switch, but if you've got the light switch off, you can't control the lights because there is no power going to the lights. So to use Philips Hue bulbs to their maximum efficiency, you need the power on to them at all times. So that is why it's a quite a good idea to replace your light switches that I'll show you in the other video so there's no confusion. Because if you have guests around to their house and they turn off the lights, that'll mean your Philips Hue bulbs will stop working. And when you go in the app, you'll be like, what's going on? If you want to use them as standard turn on and turn off lights, then you can, but it just seems like a lot of money. Now, electricians will probably get annoyed with me for calling them bulbs. Bulbs grow in the ground. They are technically lamps, but I'm gonna call them bulbs. So yeah, this is a bulb from the Philips Hue range. And uh, as I said earlier, it goes in a standard bayonet cap connector. There's not much to say, it's pretty unassuming. It does look slightly different from a light bulb, but it works in exactly the same way, but obviously a lot smarter. Now, back in the day when Philips Hue first came out, they were slightly annoying in the fact that if you had a power cut and the power came back on, all the lights would instantly switch back on again. So if you had a power cut in the middle of the night and your home was filled with Philips Hue light bulbs, when the power came back on, all the lights in the house would come back on. Thankfully, that's been fixed now. You can tell it how you want it to behave when power has been lost and then regained. You can make it either come on to what it setting it was previously. So if it was off, it would stay off. Or if it was on, it would come back on at the brightness and the color that it was meant to, or make it go back into a default state. Now, usually it's a good idea to set that to go back to the state it was in. So uh, I will show you that later on in the app. In this starter kit, we've got three Philips Hue bulbs. Now the bulbs range in price from around about 20 pounds up to about 40 pounds, depending on what style and what fit you have. The ones that do colors as well as whites are more expensive. So if you just want simple white lights, then it's pretty cheap. If you want the color ones like these, then it does cost you a little bit more. You can also get the GU10 sized fittings as well, the kind of lamps that are used in spotlight. Those are probably more expensive still. I've got lots of them around here, but I have opted for the just the standard white ones rather than the color ones because I think the color ones are around about 40 pounds a pop. And because you tend to have a lot of spotlights in a room, it can get very expensive very quickly. But the beautiful thing about Philips Hue is that you can expand your collection as you go. You don't need to just bin all your old lights and buy everything Philips Hue. You can grow your home lighting system as you can afford it. So it's not a massive, massive outlay. And while we're talking about money, the hub is around about the 30 to 40 pound mark on its own. I think this whole kit with the color lights cost me about 130 pounds. So that is really good value considering you get the colored lamps, you get the hub, and you also get a light switch. The light switch themselves, they cost around about 20 pounds. This is the version one of the light switch. There is a version two. They're very similar, they're a slightly different shape and the version two behaves slightly differently, but it's the same principle. But yeah, it's around about the 20 pound mark for the light switch. You don't need the light switches um, and you can control everything through your app or your voice assistant, but you know, it's nice to have something physical that you can just turn off all the lights. Now these hubs have a limit of up to 50 connected bulbs. So that is probably enough 
for most households. It's not a firm limit, the firm limit is 63 bulbs. The Zigbee Protocol, as it is, can't handle more than 63 bulbs on one unit, so bear that in mind. Unless your house is completely full of spotlights, I don't think you're going to hit 50 bulbs or even 63 bulbs. But you can run multiple hubs at once should you need to, but in most use cases, one hub will be enough, especially to start with. So let's have a look what else is in this box and what else we need. So uh, we've just got some little manuals there. And then we have got this box here and let's have a look what it contains. So it's got the power brick and there are adapters for Europe and the UK. So um, we're the UK, so that will slot in there like that. And that power brick plugs into the back of the hub there. And then also we have got this little network cable and this is what connects your hub to your router. And that is it. It's pretty sort of straightforward. You don't really need a lot to start your huge journey. Yeah, what I'll do now is take you on to the next part of this video where we install our hub and the, the app on my phone and then we'll get to the next stage of adding bulbs and adding light switches. So uh, yeah, let's plug this in and get started. So first of all, you've got to take the ethernet cable that came with the Philips Hue hub and plug it into a spare ethernet port on the back of your router. So uh, let's go here. And then it's a case of coming to the Hue hub, plugging in the network connection and plugging in the power connector. It takes a few moments for the hub to power up and basically you're waiting for the three lights on the front to appear. So there we go, that we've got the three lights. This one means power, this one means it's connected to the network, and this one means it's connected to the internet. And we've got the blue ring around the Philips button, so that means we're good to go. Now if you wanted to wall mount this, you can. There are screw fixings on the back but we'll just leave it on the side for now. So now it's time to sort out the Philips app on my phone. Okay, well now it's time to get the Philips Hue app set up on my phone, so uh, let's do that. I'm just gonna make it so you can see my screen there. Okay, so you can go into the App Store or the Google Play Store, whatever you use, and we'll search for Hue. Okay, so we want the Philips Hue app, not the Philips Hue Bluetooth one, so uh, we'll download that. There we go, so we're in the app. Welcome to Philips Hue, let's get started. Okay, terms and conditions, yep, reading those all. Okay, yep, that's fine, all read. Uh, yep, privacy notice. Do you want the app to be customized? Yeah, why not? Can we reach out? No. Can our friends get in touch? No. Let's get started, excellent. Okay, so connect to Hue Bridge. So, uh, Let's search. There we go, Hue Bridge found. Press the button on the center to connect. Okay, I'll go and do that. There we go, connected to your Hue Bridge. Perfect. Update Hue Bridge. Okay, this is generally always a software update, isn't there? Let's do update now. Uh, we'll turn on automatic updates, that's handy to have. Okay, so it's preparing the update. Now this goes to show that I haven't pre-prepared this. This is a brand new Hue Hub that hasn't been touched before. So, you know, adds an air of authenticity, I suppose. So we'll let that update and uh, install, and then hopefully we'll be back in a second when it's all done. So there we go, your Hue Bridge is up to date, perfect. So that's good. So let's go into the app and uh, have a little look around. Oh, well, that's very interesting. It knows about the lights that came with the kit, I would assume. That's smart, I like that. Okay, well, we'll just say that's all for now. Um, you're all set. Cool, so our home is looking pretty empty at the moment because, well, I haven't set anything up. So um, I guess what we'll do is we'll add some rooms. So um, we'll add a new room. Now you can add a room or a zone. So a room is a physical room and a zone 
is a group of lights that you might want to control simultaneously. So you could, as it says, like the whole of the downstairs, you could set up as a zone, but we'll do a room for now just to keep it simple. So we're in the living room at the moment and we're gonna put a bulb in the living room light fitting. So we'll put living room. Uh, yeah, we'll call it the living room. That's absolutely fine. Now, uh, currently it's saying unassigned lights because we've got those three lights that came with the kit. Um, but we haven't installed that yet. So um, we'll skip that for now. So there we go, on our home, we've got a living room. We could add another room. So we'll do bedroom. There we go, bedroom. We'll put master bedroom. And then again, it's asking if we want to add one of these pre-allocated lights, we'll skip that for now. Okay, and then just for argument's sake, we'll add a third room. We'll add a kitchen. Am I being daft? Is there not a kitchen? Oh, there's a kitchen right at the top. Silly me. There we go. Kitchen. So we've got sort of our house set up within the app. So I guess what we'll do now is we'll put in one of the lights and uh, we'll add it to the living room. So let's install one of the lights. So we'll take out our dumb bulb and uh, replace it with a Philips Hue smart bulb. Simple, so hopefully it behaves like a normal light at the moment. So let's get it added to the app. Okay, so let's try searching for the lights now. Let's add lights. Brilliant, found two lights, perfect. So we'll do start configuration. Now, no, that's not, that is the bedroom light. We'll call it main light. Uh, it is a signature bulb, save. Ah, look, there we go. So this one is our, we'll call it the big light. That's the one we want to add to the living room. There we go. And hopefully now, cool, right. So we'll add that to the living room. Perfect. So tap and hold to drag a light to each room. Um, the main light. It was the master bedroom, wasn't it? Done. There we go. So we're controlling it through the app. Perfect. And then we can just change color as we see fit. Perfect. That's really good. Seems to be working well. Okay. So now if we go back home, we've got the master bedroom with the lights on and uh, we've got the living room. Now with the lights off. Perfect. Right, okay, so I guess now we need to add a light switch to this setup. So um, let's do that. Okay, so we've got the light switch that came in the pack and uh, we need to add that as well. So uh, let's do that. So let's make it so you can see my screen there. Perfect, so we're going to go into settings. And then this is an accessory. Now it's already got the uh, hue dimmer switch in there. Ah, and it says it's unbreachable, but if I pull out the uh, battery tab, ah, there we go, look, it's sprung into life. Okay, so we need to configure this. So what to control? So we're gonna make it to control the lights in the living room. So we'll make it control the big light in the living room. So we'll do done. There are four buttons on this. There's a power on at the top, there's a brightness up and down, and then there's the power off. So you can choose the behavior of the buttons. So on the first press, it will go into the last on state. The second, third, fourth, and fifth press, it will cycle through different settings. We'll rename it to living room dimmer. So we don't forget, there we go, save. So in theory now, yeah, it's cycling through all the things and then um, we can just turn it off. So now your Hue light switch is configured, you can basically put it wherever you want it. So uh, you can follow the tutorial that I put up there 
to uh, install it over your existing light switch or you know you can just take the remote off and just have it you know dotted around the house somewhere and you can just turn your lights off from wherever you are it's really really smart now the thing is with smart lights, you want them to do smart things. So uh, let's have a little look at what we can do in automations. So let's create an automation. So uh, this is quite an interesting one. Leaving home, set your lights to turn off automatically when you leave your house. That's really cool. So we'll do that. Um, do you want this device to trigger location-based automatisms? Yes. We want to uh, add my phone to this because that's gonna tell the hub where I am. So yeah, that's Kip's iPhone, perfect. So next, ah, okay, so we've got to register with Hue now. So I'm going to log in with my Google account, and there we go. You need this Hue account so you can control your lights outside of home, so uh, that's handy. So we'll just put Kip is my name, because obviously once you're out of the house, it can't connect to the hub because you're not on your wireless network. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't be able to turn off the lights. So we'd have to connect up with Hugh. There we go. So uh, yet again, we've got to go and press the button on the Hugh bridge. One moment, please. There we go. So it's connected. So my online Philips Hue account is connected to my bridge. So that's good. Um, so yes, we need to grant it permission. Okay, so we now need to allow it access to my phone's location. So, uh, we've got to set home location. Um, so you can't see this. There we go, so it's found my house. That's where I live. There we go, so we'll allow it to, so we've got to go into the Hue settings and always allow it location because it needs to know the location while we're out of the Hue app. So we'll say always and go back to Hue. Perfect. So now it's asking what lights you want to turn off when you leave home. So for example, if the dog's like in the living room, like our dog is, you don't want it to turn off the living room lights because the poor little thing will be surrounded in darkness. So uh, yeah, we'll just make it turn off the master bedroom lights. Next. So these lights will turn off when you leave the master bedroom, so that's fine. So that's a cool little automation that you can add. There are loads of different automations and you can sort of create your own and make them in the Hue lab. So I won't go into that. We're keeping it fairly simple in this tutorial. So something I mentioned earlier on in the video is the power on behavior of Hue lights. Now by default, when a Hue light loses power and then regains it, it will automatically turn back on. Now that's fine unless say you have a power cut in the middle of the night and then the power comes back on and all your lights turn on. Now obviously you don't want that. But what you can do is to change the power on behavior. So you go into the settings, choose the light you want to change the power on behavior of and you'll see a screen a bit like this. So you can set it so it goes to its default setting. You can change it so it goes to its last on setting or you can put it onto power loss recovery mode, so the light will either stay off or turn back on, or you can put it back to custom. So for example, if you wanted like your lights to come back on red, so you know you've lost power at some point, you could do that, but we'll put it on power loss recovery. So if the light is off, when the power comes back on, it will stay off. But again, if the light was on when the power went off, it will come back on. So uh, yeah, we'll just change that and then press save and it's done. So that is a really straightforward overview of how you can set up Hue lights within your home. Now there is a lot more you can do with the Hue system that I haven't really even scratched the surface. You can get sensors so when you walk into the room, the lights come on. We've got that in our hallway and in our bathroom and that's really smart and also when you leave the room, you can make it so the lights turn off. There are so many different lights and things you can do. There's, it's just insane. So if you'd like a follow-up video where I show you sort of the slightly more fancier things you can do with Hue lights, then uh, do drop a comment below and I'll add that to the list of videos to make. Yeah, if this video has been helpful in any way to you, please do give it a thumbs up. That would be really awesome. And if you like this kind of video, then please subscribe to the channel. I have so many different videos on so many different subjects and you'll probably find one that interests you. Um, 
I think that's it from me. And thank you so much for watching, but for now, it's game over.